peace to the family. It's the Hood Mystic representing www.hoodmystic.com. Just want to say thank you to everybody. Peace to everybody. Love to everybody. Positive vibrations and all of that. Um, today I want to talk about some metaphysics, some Gnosticism, some spirituality. But I want it to be more or less like an educational type of deal. So if you got ADHD, you know you got ADHD, you like TikTok messages, then go to TikTok. But what I'm going to do is try to explain some things and open yourself up to some particular understandings and understand that this is going to be possibly a part one because I'm at the park with my kids. So I imagine that they ain't going to let me get this whole message off. So I want to dedicate this message to Solomon. I want to dedicate this message to Sheba. And I want to dedicate this message to all the divine feminine and all the divine masculines. And I also want to dedicate this message to all of the holistic beings who are divine masculine and divine feminine in one entity. So shout out to everybody that is having this particular spiritual beingness human experience, all of that. But let's get into some teachings and some metaphysics. And I also want to dedicate this particular lecture to Delbert, Bear, Delbert Blair, who inspired this particular channel. Um, but as we know, um, we have been in a space and time in our world where the Delta energy is the number one type of like you hearing that word a lot and maybe we if you hear a word a lot you wouldn't necessarily understand why it's being programmed into your subconscious or even deeper a message from the ancestors to dive deeper into what is being laid to you on the foreground if you see in delta well me personally let me just speak for myself if I'm seeing Delta this, Delta that, Delta Airlines, Delta everything, my spiritual mind is like, okay, dive deeper. And so as I dive deeper, I go right into the Hebrew word, Daleth. Daleth means doorway. But in this particular, con in these particular conversations, I feel like it's better if I just read and just kind of go through more of a lesson type style. So the best way to absorb this information is really to understand that your soul requires Hebrew understandings or so let me break it down another way. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, phonetics and things of that nature. Right. How do we all as a collection of human beings pick up on phonetics? Right. However, we can't all pick up on a rhythm. We can all spell a word, but we can't all like boogie to the same. Like some dancers is expertise on how they move their body. Some people move their body quite naturally to the rhythm. And some people, no matter how much you paid them, you could give them a billion point five quadrillion dollars and they couldn't get on the rhythm to save their life. So what does that say? about the universe and the energy that supports the universe, that it supports the original people. And so much so that we can be programmed with these symbols without ever realizing what these symbols mean. So in the space for people who have ADHD that might click off on this video super quick, I would just like to say that the Delta energy would be that of the vagina or the womb. So when they say the Delta variant, they're speaking specifically to the womb variant because a Delta is a triangle. Okay. Now these ancient symbols of triangle wasn't geometric more than it was talking about the womb. Okay. Why is the womb an important conversation to be having? Because the womb is a gateway for souls. So if we all are in this space in this world and we could do, you know, we could have sex 
and we could party, we could do all of this type of thing, right? But the deeper reality is that you can actually bring souls into the world. You can take souls out of the world. I mean that there's so much power in the womb and womb consciousness that it might seem strange for a dude to be talking about womb consciousness, but as a receiver of womb energy, I can only speak to its healing benefits. So let's read. Significantly, the Hebrew letter Dalit is related with Delta, the fourth Greek letter, which also looks like a Dalit turned. With those two lines connected, it looks like the Phoenician Dalt, right? So you got Phoenician, you got Greek, you got Dalit, and then you got the English language, all pulling from this ancient ancestral way of understanding the world through specific modalities such as as we'll see later specific to sex and i feel like as i kind of go through these slides i want to make a couple of things clear sex is so powerful and sex is so transformative that we should have conversations about it instead of it being shadow like and even more so, we should be able to talk about sex, even though we're not going to experience sex with each other. It's more of an understanding, the same as we can understand how to build a playground set. We should be able to build in the reference of souls or soul-like entities and energies. But I'll, I, I'll get into it as I go through these slides. So in mathematics, when you use the Greek letter Delta, which relates to Dalit, it means change. In symbol and math, this indicates change. It is a door through which things change. We need to become a conscious delta or a conscious doorway or a conscious channel. And we'll, I'll show you where this is at in reference to your energy and your chakras. But what I'm saying is you don't want to do chakra work. You don't want to do shadow work. You don't want to tap into spiritual modalities and not channel higher celestial energies. Because what you are thus saying is that your conscious mind can get you through any type of situation. But the reason that all of these celestial and higher spiritual entities exist is not for other people. They exist for you. But what are you doing specifically for your vessel to be clear and to be clean and to be open for a channel. Now, where are you specific to this energy? Is it your mind? Yeah, it's, and it is your womb. So we need to consciously, with knowledge, da'af, utilize our precious opportunity of having a physical body and having a few minutes to breathe and leave and use it to benefit that of others. So your sexual energy, I'm going to just keep it blood raw for you. If you use your sexual energy for personal pleasure, you're wasting your time. Because I'm speaking for my, I'm speaking to the spiritual healers, the spiritual professionals, people who are trying to figure out their way in this spiritual journey. Your spiritual journey starts with your brain and your sexual organs. Ten times out of ten, in reference to your brain and your sexual organs, you lead that to the wolves. To, 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 to benefit off of your ignorance, which means not knowing or no gnosis of the fact that you are divine spark energy. But this divine spark, which sends chills up your central nervous system throughout your nerves throughout your body throughout your brain throughout your sexual organs throughout your endocrine system all of the things that has happened within your body starts with one spark and the doorway for which you are existing in this world right now is through the act of sex you are created through sex. So the spark is the ignition of the sperm in the ovaries, in the magnetic pool, in the selection of that ovary. Because that ovary is so smart that Daleth 
that womb is so smart that it knows what guy to get. It knows what guy to send their pheromones to. And you just sitting there. I don't know why this dude is just on me like this. And I like him. He is my type. He, ooh, girl. He is on me. He's saying all the right things. I think I'm going to give him some pussy. I don't know why. I just feel like I'm going to just give it to him. But you don't even know him like that. My body is doing something. I can't explain it. I, I'm, but you know what? I'm going to call you right back. Friend. Bestie. I'm going to call you right back. I'm going to cut my phone off for this weekend. And we'll talk on Monday. Right? Ten months later, Lil Ray Ray is out here in these streets. The ovaries, the dialect, yo, maternal, see, I need y'all to take a few steps back, two seconds. Say, imagine that everything, because I was watching some shit on TV and it didn't read with me. So, I seen a whole bunch of shit on TV that didn't read with me. So, I'm going to need y'all to take two steps back and imagine that your ancestors, imagine that your guides, imagine that your soul will never lead you in the wrong position. Now, you can have six kids by yourself, about to get kicked out tomorrow, ain't got shit going on for yourself. You still, with all of the negativity going on within your life right now, you have to know for a fact that your ancestors and your guides and your soul won't lead you wrong. And might as well push your ass to the fucking cliff so you can realize that they exist or you can continue to live in ignorance trying to live it through your conscious mind and your sexual organs. This is a real powerful conversation that if you ain't coming at it scholastic and understanding that it make perfect sense when you reference your own personal life and it's like, I, I want to share this message with y'all so you can instantly tune into your ancestors, so you can instantly tune into your guide, so you can instantly tune into your soul. I don't never want you to think that shit. Niggas on TV got it for you. I don't never want you to think that the people in your life got it for you. I want you to tune in to the divine spark for which you have been created. Right? You you should watch that shit. <laughs> you should get a subscription to that shit. Right? As opposed to feeling bad about your children. Feeling bad about your relationship. And then going to people who do not understand that your ancestors got you. Right? Or maybe they do understand that your ancestors got you and they want to pull on some of your ancestral energy for a little boost to their shit. Who knows? But I guarantee you, if you just turn it into insight and understand that, man, let's keep reading. This is going to be a part two. We are not on, we are not here. And this is from GnosticStudies.org. And we're just doing a study on the word dialect, which is the gateway word between the Phoenician word dalt and the Greek word delta in the phonetic letter D or the phonetic number four, right? So when you say the letter D and you say the number four, those are structural instructional components to what we would call grammar. Now do the etymology for grammar, you get grimoire. So when you say the letter D, oh no, you're talking about a specific spell, okay? I mean, when you use a letter in a particular word or weird, uh, W-I-R-D, -I that's some old Nordic shit, but we will leave that there. But when you use letters for words, what are you doing? You are spelling. Spelling B, you be happy for your kid winning a spelling B. But if she start doing spells on your ass, you, you taking her to the psychologist. Make it make sense. She can get she can win a spelling B, but she can't do spells. I was going to say, I was going to say do spells on the enemy, but we not ready. We not, we not quite there yet. We still got to understand our sexual energy for we immobilize into warrior mode, but we would have to understand ourselves at a spiritual level before we could, you know, turn into Voltron or mighty Morphin power rangers and things of that nature or the X-Men and things of that nature. Right. 
We would know how they. We would have to know how they exist. Fuck. Fuck sexually. Fuck mentally. Fuck emotionally. Fuck if you had therapy or not. Do you understand that you are a divine spark? <laughs> Do you understand that you're a spiritual being having a human experience? Because if you don't fully understand that, you will subject yourself to negative emotions in reference to the kingdom not being complete. But it does it not say in the Bible that the kingdom is within you? And if the kingdom is within you, how do you find the kingdom within you? They told you at church when you was a little girl, don't be fucking and wait till you get married and, 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 and save yourself for marriage and things of that nature. We all were told that. But we don't give a fuck about that shit in 2021, now do we? And I'm not saying what's right or what's right or what's wrong or what's wrong. I'm just saying, when it comes down to understanding how to grow and how to build, it never went to a particular point within the schematics of building the kingdom is to say that you need to fuck randoms on the light night. That's some new shit that we put in the mix and like, well, we're going to add this in and see, it's still gumbo if you add cigarette butts to it. No, you ruined it. What's up? They have the juice that's in there. The juice that's in here? You can have a water. You want a water? You want to go home or you want a water? Yeah. There's two options. Share that. Our, cult our culture loves to tell that life is just about enjoying all the pleasures we can, as much as we can, until we die. This is a very convenient lie for those who are benefiting from us behaving in that way. But we do not benefit from this. Tell me the institution that you could walk in and say, you know what? I want to fuck Frank right there. Frank, her, him right there. Can I fuck him? Wherever you at, they're going to tell you to please take your ass out. I don't even care if you walk in into the strip club with that energy. Did you hear what that motherfucker just said? He just said he wanted to fuck Frank. What was his name? Bernard? Wait, Bernard, get your ass up out of here. We don't like... if Like, sexual energy and all of that is a certain panage. It's a certain tact. It's a certain way that it goes about. It's not an assertive, aggressive... That you could just indulge in it or else our conversation would adapt to it, right? It's like if I go into your house... And offer you some water. You're not going to be offended because our society is had adapted to know that most people, when they're offering you water, it's a sensible request. If you walk into somebody's house and they say, "Hey, I got some pussy for you. I got some dick for you," you're like, "Wait a second. Okay, I'm up out of here." Right? You're not going to be in a situation like that. So, what I'm saying is, if you can rationalize it within your mind. But you can't create the conversation like you're not working in a brothel. I mean, your home is not a brothel, right? Your energy is not prostitutish. Like, you can't talk about, like, being a prostitute and being a hoe and, and all of that, right? You would, I'm, what I'm saying is you would conduct yourself like a hoe, man or woman, and then take on all of those energies or, like they say in this culture and society, bodies, Bodies on bodies and bodies and bodies. I ain't make that shit up. But let's deal with the metaphysics of it, though. When a man ejaculates, it's called la pite la mort, which means little death. Where a lot of people get it fucked up where they say that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how real it is. They say that a man is dying. That's not necessarily true when you deal with the biology of a man because a man produces sperm well into his 80s. His body produces sperm. Now, the, the Lapite Le, Lamort, because men was the creators of the ideology, why would they create an ideology in reference in their little death? No, they're saying that they're releasing their, their bodies, their men, their souls... In that woman, and, and it's a little death. It's a, like your womb becomes a graveyard for energy. 
This is not fake energy either because that same cell, just one cell could create a person like me. Now, a man in his ejaculate has millions of energies like me. That would have to be toxic, meaning that I'm a married man. Unless I want to have a child. You don't put sperm. This is a this is a vice for people in relationships that want to have a healthy and happy relationships. You do not put semen and let that shit sit in your wife's womb. Cuz then when she has her period or menstruation period is harder and heavier cuz her body is working so hard to get you the fuck up out of her, fam. You got to understand this shit, fam. You got to be so smart about this shit that you you understand that your woman's womb is the gateway for not your life, not your children's life, but your prosperity, your protection, your overall good energy, everything. And your sperm is parasitic. Meaning that it's it's. Like you, programmed to survive. So be smart about it. Adam and Eve are symbols related to creation, not only in the past, but in the present. The root of our forces of creation reside in our brain and in our sex. Adam and Eve in us. Brain, sex... Brain, sex, are tinted by the fruit of knowledge or da'ath, knowledge, da'ath, knowledge. Therefore, in that fruit, the serpent, a penis, that's what a serpent is. It's an allegory for penis. What's up? I need my hat. Cool. What's my hat? Um, you want my hat? No, you can never have your stick to go play. Why? Huh? Why? Because kids don't play with sticks at the park. So knowledge is sexual. Let's explain. Let's let's get into that a little bit more. So it's a little bit more clear. Through a sexual mistake, Adam and Eve left Edom. Adam, Eve, Ish, Isha, the men and women in Hebrew terms are symbolic. The man, the masculine force, represents our brain. The woman, the receptive, represents our sexual organs. At a spiritual level, at a spiritual consciousness, I don't care who the fuck they are. They can come argue with me if you don't, if, if they don't like talk about it. Let's talk about it. But there is no such thing as man and woman. We are all man and woman. The woman, the receptive force. So in the Bible, metaphysical studies, we're only referencing our masculine force and our feminine force. Our feminine force is our sexual organs, our receptivity. Our masculine force is our brain and our logic and our thinking and our rational ways of thinking. Between the two is how we create. We create through the doorway, Daleth, or the the Daleth, or the doorway, or the gateway to knowledge. But the gateway to knowledge is our sexual energy. Doth or knowledge does not refer to materialistic knowledge or anything you can learn in books. Doth is a very special kind of knowledge that relates to superior levels of consciousness. To have a superior level of consciousness or awareness means that you have awareness is clearness is clarity or sight. Consciousness is the ability to be aware. 
Now, if one is aware of themselves and their sexual energy, they reach superior levels of consciousness. The end. When you understand that the spiritual comes before the physical, you will never look at the physical as something that you must attend to because everything in the physical is malkut or a result. So in reference to what you need to actually do to bring about the level of transformation in your life is to simply be that channel or that vessel for supreme levels of consciousness through the act of purging. Through the act of having relationships with divine feminine energy, but keeping your dick in your pants. In Hebrew, knowledge, gnosis, is called dath. The first letter of dath is daleth. The first letter of knowledge is a doorway. But doth knowledge is the doorway back to Eden. What is exceedingly interesting about this word, da'ath, beginning with da'leth, is... Oh, shoot. Twofold. You can pass through it in two directions. In penis, or no, in vagina or womb, and out penis. The same is true of da'ath. Gnosis, knowledge, the tree of knowledge, the tree of death is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because from that door, there are two potential outcomes. Now, good and evil is not versus how you feel versus how you, whether you like something or whether you don't like something. I'll do you one better. You will like some, you will like something and then they'll, they'll struggle right you like your baby daddy but he can't put the goddamn lean down he can't put the percocets down so if you like something you imagine that is going to thrive now when you like something and it doesn't do well it don't sit right with your being the reason why it don't sit right with your being because whether you like something is inconsequential deep metaphysical occult studies would come to the realization that good and evil is specific tor Pure, ra, impure. Torah, pure and impure. Hey. Hey, brother. It's hot out here. You want the water? Sounds good. What you want? You want this juice? Yes. Hold on. Because I know you're not going to stop bothering me until I give you this juice. And you having, you having fun? Yeah. So good and evil, specific when you at home, if you ever wondered why when you don't like somebody, it never matter. When you like somebody, it don't matter. You know how many people don't like me? Never, I never wake up and be like, damn. Remember such and such comment under my video says she don't like me because I cuss too much and say pussy too much and shit like that. And she, she unsubscribed. She don't want to listen to nobody talk about pussy all the damn time. Guess what I did in the morning? Probably just jumped fresh up out of that thing. So, uh-oh, sorry. Sorry that I know what real spirituality is. Sorry that you can't you can't seem to figure that thing out. Cuz really it's about being pure versus being impure. And this is very simple. Where are you pure or impure at? In the brain? Or in the sexual organs. And, to, and, and I'm not saying this because I want you to be hunky-dory and, and be a lame out here, right? I'm not saying that to be a square or to not get no love and got no attention and have nobody to hold you and call you bay at night. No, I'm not saying that. 
I'm saying that in order to have a clear sight of who you are at a spiritual level, it's hard to find that when you ex exchange in sexual energy. Because I was a person who have lived on both sides of the fence. My life is specifically cut off to when I met my wife and decided to be faithful to my wife, I was able to exercise my spiritual birthright. She was the doorway to my spiritual understanding and overall peace of mind because without her I did not have it because I had Jackie I had Jane I had Susan I had Linda I had Dr Jasmania Tasmania it was Brenda Felicia Pamela Renee Linda you know what I mean like what the fuck like all these types of chicks and I'm thinking like shit I'm the man it must be right in his act to be pulling up on these girls and things of that nature. But in reality, it was evil because it allowed me to be impure. Because what is the most pure thing is when I'm able to in tune and have conversations in reference to my soul. Now, I'm not saying my soul as a catchphrase. I'm talking about the perpetual good feeling of gratitude. And not gratitude in the space that you wish you were grateful for the things that you're experiencing. No, the real live gratefulness of everything that is happening for me. This uh, children. Children. So real quick. Da'ath. Queen of Sheba, Venus, thyroid, voice, listening, transformation, intuition, illumination, clarity, watching where you eat, hydration, are all things that lead to purity. Are all things that lead to knowledge. Oh my God. I don't know. Kids. Kids do not. Lead to anything but stress. And exhaustion. I'm doing two things at once family. I'm deciding on what I should do next. Okay. Whew, that was a tense situation. In Hebrew, the fourth letter has the numerical value of four. Daleth, four, which would be significant to Beyonce and Jay-Z, but I digress. Daleth also represents a doorway. In other words, when the letter is placed on a word, you have to keep in mind, not only is it the letter D, it symbolizes a door. So when you see the Delta variant or you see, um, I want some D, I want some D, that's I want some, I want a doorway. I want to open myself up to a different possibility. When there is no desire to cage the soul, then happiness is natural and normal. So my message is specific and clear. If you're not if you're not feeling happy all the fucking time, you can't essentially say that the work is being done. Cuz at an emotional level, if you're still in fear and you're still in pain and you're still butt hurt, this is the only word I could think of, then you're not understanding joy. You might deal with happiness Okay, I'm doing this meditation. I feel good. I'm watching the hood mystic. I feel good. I'm watching her. I feel good. I'm watching him. I feel good. Okay, I'm walking in the park. I feel good. Okay, I'm in the car. I feel good. But when I'm in this spot or that spot where my baby daddy do this, when I'm vulnerable, when I'm hurt, when I'm this, when I'm that, but about, but about, now I feel a certain type of way. Now I don't know how to handle it. Now I'm a little sketchy. Now I don't know. Now I'm ready to fight your ass. Now I'm ready to run. I don't know. Now I'm going to cry. Like, what the fuck? In reference to the soul, the message is specific and clear and dead, dead like a fucking bullseye. If you're not happy, 
scratch that. If you're not in a state of bliss and joy, it's always more work to do, but it's definitely more work to do for you specifically, personally. Because ain't nobody got time for that. Especially when you do this work. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't fucking put off doing the chicken dance. You don't put off doing the Harlem Shake. You don't put off doing all of the latest. You don't put off doing the fucking Millie Rock for knowledge of self. Just to be with people who still want to do the fucking chili da- chicken dance and Millie Rock and shit. It's an elevation. So what does this elevation look like? It looks like joy. What is joy? Joy is the perpetual state of nirvana and bliss because it is from the inside. Hard to get there if a nigga is beating up your guts. Tearing your back out the frame. That don't even sound right. Fucking the shit out of you. That don't even sound right. And now you want to have a level of spiritual understanding. How? When your gateway is fucking, your gateway is not being honored. And what is this? What is the sanitary understandings? Are you working with your menstruation by giving it a clear, clean vessel? So if you are to have a menstruation period, it can just do its cleansing thing. Get up out of there in one to three days. Oh shit, it's clean up in this bitch. I don't even got to work that hard. Mm, I'm up out of this bitch. Okay. All right, girl, I'll see you next month. All right, sis, I'll see you next month. Right? What? Okay, now you, Now I'm going to just say this because everything is different, and of course, but I'm going to just say, if your body got to work hard, can you assist your body in not working so hard? Or do you just not give a fuck? But then, that's the kicker. Don't talk to me this week. My my, my my situation is coming. My friend is here. Don't talk to me. I ain't, I ain't in the mood. F- fuck you. I don't want to talk. It's, it's a rough one. How are we... How, how are we... Fellas. How are we as a couple... Making the menstruation period... Because fellas... Let's talk to the bros real quick. In the relationship. I hate when she on her period. You must not really hate... When she on her period that much, fam. Hood, what you talking about? What do I got to do with her period? Nigga, you got everything to do with her period. You fucking splooging in that shit. There's not no porno. There ain't no cream pie. But you learned that from porn, my guy. You know the enemy is going to attack you where it hurts you the most in your sexual practices? We are a tantric, yoga, energy exchanging people. Like, I'm not going to tell you, man. A orgasm, man. Your wife can send you so, so, so much powerful energy. Because that's the non-physical beingness of us in that moment. Having that re- remembering of who we are as Atlanteans. Your wife can revitalize you. But if her body got to work so hard to clean... It's not that she's tired from work. It's not that she's tired for cleaning or cooking or none of that shit that she says she's tired from. She's tired for having to work the sperm out of her womb so she could get a moment to think for herself. And every time she turns around, you are fucking on top of her like a fucking savage. You don't kiss her. You don't touch her. You don't rub her. I can sense women who haven't got a fucking massage or a touch in years. Because the energy be all in their back. Their back be all tense. And you'd be like, you you said you got a what? You got a man? How you got a man in your back tense like this? You, you just came off of doing a pull-up set? Pull-ups and dips off the yard or some shit, sis? You're back like bricks. Yeah, that's your man, but he's stressing you the fuck out. How, what you mean he's stressing me out? How you know? You, 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 you came up in here like Debo. I was just going to tuck mine in. Fuck that. I don't know what's going on up here. You, 
The hood mystic in here? Wait, wait a second. <laughs> no? <laughs> who asking? <laughs> who, who, what, what? Uh-uh, no, no, no. My name Kyrie. So, yeah. The bliss and the joy and the smiles is a, is part of your responsibility to make your relationship a joyful, happy, contentful, blissful space. You have to remove the sperm out of the equation, my man, unless you want another child. And then even that is a specific time during the ovulation period. I'm going to let it settle in because the dudes is thinking... What, what you mean ovulation period what, what, what's that hood what you mean you say ovulate what you talking about ovulation looking at his girl what hood talking about ovulation did that got anything to do with us and she like what oh, cut on cut off this video cut this shit off what you always listen to this stupid dude where's his kids at do a number Q because here come my kids right now I'm gonna tell him about the ovulation as soon as this kid see it, as soon as I see what this kid won't What's the deal, Pickle? Hi, okay. brother. You chilling? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pay for huh? car. Yeah? I'm going to pay. So they, they got these apps that give you a specific window, an ovulation window, if you're trying to make a baby. Right, fellas, this is this is save you so much money in vitro and steroids and hair hormones. First thing we're gonna do, fellas. First thing we're gonna do. We gonna you wanna get out? No, the AC is on. The AC is on. No, no, I'm not turning it off. It's time to do a part two. Damn, I was just getting to the good part though, John. Can you play for like 20 more minutes? No. You done? Yeah. Okay. Oh no. You done for it? You done? You gonna ruin the party? But the but the grown folks was trying to have fun. Oh no. You was trying to have fun. So you see, knowledge is a doorway of cause and effect. So knowledge of the ovulation period is a doorway for. So let's just let's just do this. All right. Let's not have sex. You tell a dude this is some real fly shit to tell a dude. Okay. Like he's talking to you. You talking to him and shit like that. This is some real fly shit to say. Hey, it's um July 30th. I'm ovulating from August 1st to August 6th. Come tear this shit up. But understand that we're about to have a baby, right? And I'm going to need you to sign this paperwork on what you're going to do to take care of me and the child and all of this. But, oh, yeah, if you sign this contract and get it notarized by your lawyer and I get your Social Security and all of your information. So, oh, yeah, I need your bank account number and I need your SSN and your EIN. I need all of the numbers associated with making sure that you stand up to this contract. But, yes, while I'm ovulating, oh, yes, this pussy is yours. But I'm having a baby and you taking care of me and this baby. That nigga be sitting there like, wait a second. You know what? You know what? Um, I'm going to get back to you on that. I'm a, That's an interesting proposition. But you know what? I'm going to have to talk to my lawyer about that. And um, yeah, right? Because think about cause and effect. What if cause and effect is specific to... Aligning sexually. On the car. Get it then. Imagine if sexual energy was aligned to the circadian rhythms of the pineal and the ovulation cycle. And what if during the ovulation cycle you were able 
to have sexual energy and, you know, the regular, you know, getting your freak or energy, right? Like you do, how you do, what you do, right? With the with all of that, candles lit. Who you like listening to? Tony Braxton, Babyface, Shy, Silk. You, you into that thing. But instead of ejaculating... You keep in mind a sigil in reference to a mutual, beneficial, spiritual result or a malkut or, or a manifestation. And you did it specifically in reference to the moon cycle, the ovulation cycle, and that was your cause and effect. See, what I just laid out for y'all was gnosis or knowledge. Every action that we perform produces a result. When that action is empowered through gnosis, through knowledge, through sexual purity, sexual goodness, sexual tor. So we said sexual tor, good pure, ra, bad, impure. So when we have pure sex with people who are pure in their intentions, pure in their devotion, pure in their love for you, they're not so fucking busy that they can't even pay you no fucking attention because you're so fucking horny, you give them the pussy anyway. And then you're saying, well, I was being patient with you. No, you were being dumb. But not dumb in a bad way. Just dumb in a way that we need to get knowledge in reference to the man that will stand and hold space. Or the the masculine energy that will hold space for the feminine energy that you recognize through your purity. So what is the number one way that you are impure? Is it food? These people will have you out here doing cleanses, doing fasting, doing all of this shit. And they'll never say you got to cleanse out your womb. And they'll be selling you fake ass steams. Just a bunch of herbs and shit that they don't even do research on. They just be pulling shit out the cabinet. And you'll be like, she's so cute. I think I'm going to buy a steam for her. That's not what we're here for, but maybe we are here for that. Maybe I had to just put that in there for a certain reason, but what is purity in reference to having true cleanliness? For me, it is being with the same woman sexually. No stress, no confusion, peace, bliss. I'm able to be who I'm supposed to be and who I plan to be and who I say I am. Imagine if you had to throw in a lie here or there. Imagine if you say, I'm going to work. You're going to go chill with your other baby mama. None of this happens. Nothing good happens for me if that's the scenario. So the greater our knowledge, the greater we have for either good or evil, but it's not whether you like something or whether you don't like something. You can't say Trump is evil and Hillary Clinton is good. That don't even make sense if you really examine that shit. All you can say is this person is pure. This person is impure. And the only way you can detect who is pure or impure is if you yourself as a vessel is pure pretty simple so obviously when a man and a woman come together you have the upwards delta so this is how they fuck you up the ladies in the fraternities and things or the ladies in the sororities and things of that nature when they show you the delta And it's pointed up. That's the phallus. That's 
upward energy. That's where a penis, a penis goes up. The real delta, the real dalet, the real gateway is a downward pyramid. So the delta sorority, I don't know if they do this or not, but the delta should be going pointed down, not pointed up. But in reference to whatever the energy is, it's having an upward triangle and a downward triangle. Because in a sense, we are receptive. And in a sense, we are feminine. And in a sense, we are proactive. We all have to take care of ourselves. So in a sense, we are all masculine. So in reference to Jews, or in reference to Hebrews, or the Star of David, or the Star of Solomon, it's a sexual symbol. Star of Solomon, the Queen of Sheba, is a sexual mythos in relation and combining the divine masculine energy and the divine feminine. But if you can't understand that you're a divine feminine or a divine masculine from the shit I tell you, the only way you can get there is by through a level of purity. Should you do a cleanse? Should you do a fast? Should you do a momentary situation that say, I'm clean today for this shit that I've done? Fuck out of here. We're talking about a lifestyle of cleanliness. We're talking about a lifestyle of purity. Because we understand what is good. We understand how to channel joy. It's simple. Purity. Is that it? I think we almost done. The Delta variant within. In other words, the upper trinity expresses a unit. And these two trinities represent the seal of Solomon, the still of Solomon, the seal of Solomon, and the star of David. You see all of these symbols all of the time. Now you know you can get that shit popping in your bedroom. Hold on. I just want to show y'all this. For the fellas out here. Don't know how to use their sexual energy. Through the attachment of his organs to sensual pleasure. A man will doubtlessly incur guilt. It's a feeling of. Ah, what am I doing? Right? It's a... It's an angst, it's an anguish that a person feels in relation to a negative experience with a divine feminine energy in the space of arguing where somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. If you argue with your partner, the relationship is already over. Y'all just faking the funk. You should never argue with your partner. If you want to be with them. Never. Never. Because essentially. You are using whatever influence that you have. To turn a person away. From what they truly believe. And you're going to give them logic, emotions, anger, guilt. You shouldn't have done that. I would never do that to you. Why would you do that to me? I can't stand you. I should have never. And all of this. At the same time, a person is making a choice to love you by having a sexual relationship with you. So every sexual relationship that you have with a person without specifically knowing that that person is going to stand with you in the rain, in the snow, in the sleet, you're going to feel angst. However, when you know that person is pure, oh, it feels wonderful. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Not even on a sexual level, but on a sexual level, A1. But on a personal level, on a success level, on the way you carry yourself, on your karma, on the way people treat you at the coffee shop, the way people treat you at the theater, everything is just on the up and up. Because there's no guilt in my heart. 
I have no real reason to beat myself up. It's a very simple mathematical understanding for the men out there who wish to be successful. You learn to love. This is the game. And sometimes you don't love yourself. I get that. And sometimes you need to be alone and learn that shit. You could be alone, you could be alone today. Learn to be gentle with yourself. Learn to be compassionate with yourself. Learn to listen to yourself intentively. Learn to take care of yourself inside and out. You could be the dirtiest, bummiest, ugliest dude on the block. You begin to love yourself, you will then be turning heads in a matter of months guaranteed. Because this is what we all have for ourselves. To put ourselves first and be the beacon. Because 99% of all of us do not have the capacity to look at ourselves and say, Boy, oh boy, you the shit. You amazing. You are fucking amazing. You know what? I love you. I'm going to take your, I'm going to sit your ass in a beautiful bath tonight. I'm going to light a candle. I'm going to burn some incense. I'm going to play with these herbs. I'm going to make a potion. I'm going to make a tincture. I'm going to channel my ancestors. I'm going to walk through the graveyard. I'm going to visit some mounds. I'm going to give the spirituality a shot. It's a million and one things you can do, young man, besides thinking about sex. Because we're referencing occult metaphysical techniques and referencing to purity or impurity. If you want it, put the pussy down. If you want to keep fucking up, keep indulging in the shit. They'll give it to you now. I hear they're giving that shit away for $40. Meaning that it's available and it's accessible. Because women essentially think you're a dumbass. And you've fallen into it. Let them do what they got to do. But I'm speaking specifically to the man who wants it. He wants to be. He wants to, he wants to feel. He wants to understand the soul, but he can't get past the pussy. Because the pussy is not your soul, believe it or not. Your soul is in your ability to love yourself. See, self-love isn't just for beautiful girls on IG. Self-love is for the dusty, fat, crusty, ugly, dusty, won't get no holler type of dudes. It may be spirit is doing that because... That's the essential ingredient to overall self-realization. Spirit is just giving you a faster path to it. Maybe. (laughs) Dalet in Hebrew also means impoverished woman. We are spiritually impoverished very poor because we have this illusion of desires which can never be satisfied and as much as we try to feed them as much as we try to satisfy them they are never satisfied i don't care how much you will get you will still not be happy no matter how many sexual partners you get you will never be satisfied by that lust Because if you were satisfied, you never ate a hamburger and said, this hamburger is good and fulfilling. Give me another one. That then becomes what is called a sin or or something wrong with your ideology. That's greed. To which greed, when you watch it play out, it don't never end well. So in reference to life, it's a level of temperance. It's a level of balance. That goes along with it. Where we may think that the more that we get, the better things are. That is not in reference to metaphysics in occult thought or Gnostic understanding. In reference to finding your divine spark, it has to be a modality of releasing the illusion or physical malkut, physical nature of it all. But thus you have to figure out, well, why would I do that? I'm thinking that having the Bentley Benz in the more is going to make me feel good. So why would I release that?
you would then have to understand that connecting to the soul and the feeling of joy is going to trump no matter where you're at in life. Last slide. I th yeah, this is the last slide that I have. I think I went through them all. This is the last one. Many of us have jobs and careers that our soul did not really want anyway. I'm going to throw in relationships. Many of us have jobs and careers and relationships that our soul did not really want anyway. I've been in hundreds of relationships that my soul never wanted. Once I got into a relationship with my wife, a relationship that my soul wanted, everything worked out for me. A lot of people choose careers, directions, relationships in their life because they want to impress other people. I wanted the baddie. I wanted the bitch with the fat ass. I wanted the curvy worthy. I wanted everything to be blick blah blam. Not, I don't know if I specifically wanted that, but I definitely wanted to impress my friends and be like, man, who is that? She a baddie. And I done, and I done had that. I remember pulling up at certain events and just stopping the whole whatever going on. Once my girl get out the car and it's like, damn, who the fuck is that? That was when I had a whole different name. You couldn't even call me Kyrie back then. My name was David. And I was trying to find them girls. And my mindset was on if I get the baddest chick. I'm a, I'm a feel like the man. I'm a, I'm a, like, I thought this is what was going to happen. But the reality of getting that and feeling that was never a part of my life path. My soul never wanted that for me. My ego and rage with ambition decided that it was going to manipulate what life was going to be for me outside of tuning into my soul. And because of that, situation didn't end well or they are trying to do something to impress their parents their family not because they wanted to get it specifically in the end they end up being disappointed discouraged many times we follow our desires only to discover we did not get anything out of it or when we get something it was painful so don't be in a rush to judgment with men and women and relationships in relation to becoming pure with yourself. Becoming gentle, I'm telling you. Doing root chakra work, like I'm telling you. My root chakra is specific. I can't even wear Walmart drawers no more. I got to get the silky shits, right? My whole perineum is sensitive for the like, man, we... You buying them cheap ass draws, man. You can't even live like that no more. I'm saying my root chakra is activated and to a point that I'm so happy that there's like other draws that I could particularly buy from this store. Cause imagine if I just never knew that I could just be sitting on greatness while I'm talking to y'all. Like I'm just sitting on greatness right now and it just feel amazing. I never knew that you could just be feeling like this as you just having conversations and just walking through the park and shit. But an activated root chakra for me is realizing that everything about you is sacred. But if we're not going to take the time to get in tune with our root chakra and sacral chakra, meaning that we're not, you can't just simply identify yourself in having sex with somebody or masturbating but then when it comes to sexual energy and conversations there is no conversation to it imagine if you are a contractor and the only time you worked on contract shit was when somebody hired you you would suck at contracting now if you study contracting day in and day out how to the how to install the latest gadgets and gadgets and appliances and hooking up Wi-Fi and all of the rooms and all of this shit and offer a Wi-Fi service off the shit that you've learned about being a contractor. 
you would get more business. Meaning that the more that we have conversations in reference to sex, the better we become at it. However, if sex is impure to you, if sex is a no-go, if sex is not a topic that you want to talk about, however, you want to have it, then the men that are in your life are taking full advantage of you because they know for a fact that you don't know how to build a house because you don't know nothing about it. Now, kick them to some hot shit. I'm only having sex from now on when I ovulate because I want to have a baby when I'm having sex. And I want you to save up all of your semen, all of your sperm, because I want you to be fully loaded so we can have a baby. And then, and to make this shit right, I want us to go to goddamn Carter's. I want us to go to Oshkosh Bagosh. My, I start ovulating on Sunday. Saturday, we hitting up all the baby stores. Nope, we not going to Ruth's Chris. We not going out to eat. I don't want to go to the movies. I don't want to go to no flowers. I just want to look at baby shit. I want to look at cribs and shit. And then he go like, damn, why you always want to look at baby shit? Just look at him like, why you always want pussy? You obviously want me to have children. It's a simple mathematical function. If they play you for pussy, you play them for babies. Nothing wrong with that. Because you lose losing way more at the in, in the end game. Because 10 times out of 10, you're going to be the one to make the decision to take care of that baby 18 years out of your life. Put millions of dollars on the table for that kid to be a successful individual out here in these streets. And the nigga just got some pussy scot-free. So in reference to that not happening ever again, so help you God, you show him every fucking baby photo. What's your baby pictures look like? What's your mama look like? Do she got good hair? I for sure want my baby to have good hair. I don't give a fuck what they say on CNN, the Grio, the Root, nigga. My baby gonna have wavy hair, curly hair. Let me see your mama. Let me see your daddy. Girl, you weird. No, I'm not weird. What do you think fucking leads to? You weird to think that fucking don't lead to a child. Matter of fact, what's your EIN number? I see you on the business. Imagine you saying, what you do? I own a business. What's your EIN number? Why you want my EIN number? Why you want my pussy? I feel like them things is exchangeable at this point. So you don't want $40? No, I don't want $40. I want a social security number and an EIN number. Pronto. Niggas will start respecting you way more for you to imagine that, okay, I can play the sex game with a dude. Can't play the sex game with a dude. Sex means too much to a dude. And it don't mean that much to you. But in a sense... It does more damage to you psychologically, mentally, emotionally to have sex with a person who does not care about you psychologically, mentally, emotionally, and physically. However, if you find yourself in a position that you haven't listened to everything that your spirits and everything has said to you, now is the time. And as opposed to letting it lead you into this person, into that person, hopefully it leads you into becoming the best version of yourself. Because that will be the energy that will sustain you in all of your relationships. So you don't want to deal with the, 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 the probability of pain, the probability of hurt, the probability of, of destruction or distraughtness. Because... You are tuned in and tapped in to higher supreme levels of consciousness that are found within you. So, it's been another edition of Esoteric Mumbo Jumbo. I want to thank my kids for being awesome. Um, not doing too much. Just doing a little bit of stuff. Let me know that they're alive. But I'm more or less watching my youngest son make friends with this um, older lady. So I'm about to go get him and um, make sure <laughs> make sure everything is kosher. Make sure she don't try to um, 
take my baby or nothing like that. But y'all be sure to follow me on YouTube. Monday, we doing hood in the morning. And I will touch. I'm really on this Delta shit. So I'm really going to talk more about it and using it in the realms of law of attraction. So follow me on YouTube, The Hood Mystic. What else? Chakra Nova, ColumbianExchange.com. You can get Chakra Nova, Astrology Explained, How to Read Natal Charts Easily and Effectively. We got a whole selection of herbs. Herbs are awesome. If you don't got herbs, what are you doing with your life? Mama Mystic. She is not just throwing herbs together, calling it a steam. She's using high quality herbs that will assist you in the healing and removing Ray Ray, Tone Tone, Jim Jim out of your system because who wants Debbie energy in your womb? Help yourself in ways that you don't even know you need help by getting a womb steam. And my wife is such a G that you don't even got to buy it. You can talk. I mean, you got to buy it, but before you buy it, you can talk to her, you can build with her. And if you think I'm psychic, if you think I'm intuitive, I ain't nothing when it comes to my wife. My wife is a straight up reality bender, warper, and she's so original with the shit that she don't do it for no clout. Me, I'm just like a kid in a candy store. I'm just trying to boast and pop shit at the end of the day. But my wife is just spirit with no with no promo. She don't got no point to prove. So and I say that to the ladies who interested, you not you don't just gotta get the steam. Email me, email her, DM her, and you know, get the lowdown on the before you spend your money. Talk to who you gonna be spending your money with and so you can get the best product for the money that you spend. Have that conversation, tell her what you're going through. And she'll tune in and tap into whatever and come up with a specific combination just for you. I didn't see I didn't see young ladies glow up and blow up off my wife's Yoni steam and things of that nature. And um, beyond that, stop taking it and then fall off and wall off. So another thing I'll be telling her to tell other people, you don't just wash your car one time and keep riding. Right. You don't just wash your car one time and keep riding. You got to keep a cycle. So don't fucking get a Yoni steam like it's a novelty. Yoni steams, womb steams is not a nav is not a novelty. It is spiritual upkeepings. Same way we take a bath. Same way we take our aesthetics and shit seriously, our makeup and our eyebrows and shit. Womb is the same way, fam. You feel me? And I'm just saying that in reference to the families out there who want to have healthy and joyful energy exchange. We start by building purity. So, fellas, don't be bringing your wife energy from the streets in your home and then be like, man, she always had an attitude. She always tripping. You causing that shit, fam. Even if you don't cheat. You could work it out if she get angry. When you cheating, it's hard to work that shit out. Hard to work that shit out because now you got to fight two women. Because psych women so psychic that they can use your wife as a channel. So you she'll be arguing one point where's your wife and then your side bitch should come in with a point like you don't even take me to Riri's no more. And you like, I ain't never took you to Riri's. And she like, what you wait, what huh? Huh? This energy game is real, man. So, you know, black people, we need to stop thinking on the realms of pleasure doing our own thing. We need to figure this shit out, man. Because this shit is more than a nigga wearing beads and crystals and hotep and all of that. It's about creating a dynasty and a high level of spiritual energy by sticking by your goddamn wife, fam. Sticking by your husband. Stop jumping from dick to dick, pussy to pussy and things of that nature. But the message was like it was in 2016 when I hopped up on this thing. And it's the same in 2021. And in 2030, I still be popping the same shit. Don't ever think that I'll flip on the family being the most important structure to your spiritual development. 
and understanding the family and having the conversations brings us out of ignorance. So with that being said, you all have a wonderful day, night, evening. Much love from my soul to your soul, from my family to your family. Let's do this damn thing. You feel me? Um, I'll see you guys on Monday. Peace.